Hey guys, good afternoon. We are going to take a couple of minutes and talk about some of the parameters that you were exposed to in your reading for this week. You were tasked to create an experiment based on an observation that I gave you. And in doing so, you needed to consider several different parameters. So what I'm going to do here is uh, talk about all those different parameters and possible um, variables that you might use or uh, parameters you might use for each of those different variables. And then you can go back to the assignment of creating your experiment and see whether what you had initially set up is still going to work or not. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go through all the different parameters that are involved in designing an experiment. The first thing you need to understand is there's two separate groups you need to have in an experiment. One is the control group, the second is the experimental group. So why do we have two separate groups? Well, if you remember when we're designing an experiment, we are looking to be able to test certain parameters. But in order to test those, we have to have something that is unchanged against which to test it. So that would be your control group. The definition of a control group is an unchanged group against which the experimental group is measured. I'm going to go ahead and write that down, okay? It's an unchanged group. against which an experimental group is made. Okay. All right. So in our experiment where we're taking um, pennies, okay, that were cleaned by Taco Bell sauce and we are testing them, what might we set up as our control group? Well, I think a logical control group would be pennies that are untouched. What do I mean by that? I mean, we're going to take some pennies that have similar uh, you know, dirtiness to them, and we're going to have some pennies that we're going to do nothing to. Okay, And we're going to test all of our... Um, experimental group pennies against that original group. Now, if we were to find miraculously that the untouched penny suddenly, with exposure to only air, became clean, then we would know that our hypothesis was wrong. Okay, so, but we have to start with an, a control group that is an untouched group, unchanged group, okay? Our second group is our experimental group. Well, what's that group? Well, that's the group that's going to be exposed to different um, parameters in order to test our hypothesis. Okay, we have to have a way to um, try to falsify our hypothesis. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up this experimental group, which has three different variables in it. Okay, and by having this experimental group with three different variables, we'll be able to test specific parameters. Okay, so this is the group being exposed. to different parameters for the purpose of testing the hypothesis. All right, that's our experimental group. Now, within that we have three separate variables. We have a control vari variable, we have an independent variable, and we have a dependent variable. Now, the independent and dependent variable might be pretty obvious to you. What's the, let's start with those. What's the independent variable? Well, that's the variable that's being changed by the experimenter, okay, of my independent variable. That's the variable being changed. Now, I'm going to give you an example of what you could have set up in your experiment. If you didn't set it up this way, that's fine. What you have may work. What you're going to do when I'm done here is you're going to go back and look at your um, what you've set up for your experiment and see if you have all these things in place. Do you have a control group? Do you have an experimental group? And in your experimental group, do you have a control variable, an independent variable, and a dependent variable? Okay. So for, for our independent variable, what I might say is, right, my, my hypothesis might be, um, suppose my hypothesis is that the vinegar in the taco sauce cleans pennies. All right? 
So that's that's my hypothesis. So then if I if my independent variable is I need to have different substances that I'm going to use to try and clean pennies. Okay. So my independent variable would be the substance in which I soak the penny. That's my independent variable, the type of cleaning solution I'm going to use, the substances I'm going to try and clean them in. Okay. Now, my dependent variable, it's, you might feel like the dependent variable isn't really a variable, but it is. Okay. The dependent variable is basically a variable that we don't change, but we look at for our results. Okay. So what I mean by that is that's the thing that you as a researcher are looking at to see how this responds to the independent variable. Okay. So for what we're doing, probably the best dependent variable, so this is the variable we're looking at. As a result. Okay, and so in our experiment, probably a good dependent variable would be the cleanliness. Okay. Now, this in, in our experiment, that's not going to be the most. Um, uh, there's not going to be a a quantitative measurement, right? We're not measuring the grams of dirt on it and then measuring the grams of dirt that are gone. But we're going to be looking at the overall cleanliness of the of the penny. So that would be our dependent vari variable. The independent variable is what we're cleaning it in, and the dependent variable is the cleanliness. What we're trying to see is. Does the dependent variable, is there a cause-effect relationship with the independent variable? Okay, those two should make sense. Now, what is our control variable? If you remember in an experiment, you can only change one thing at a time. Right? If you have more than one, if you are introducing more than one variable, you have no way to discern which variable impacted your results. Does that make sense? So we can only have one independent variable. We can't actually have more than one dependent variable. So what we're doing, we're just going to choose one. Okay? So we, we can only have one independent variable, and we can only have one control variable. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to, in our, um, we're going to have our substance being soaked. We're going to check our cleanliness and our control variable. What I would choose as a control variable. Um, this is, and just so you know, the control variable is designed to mini minimize any effects other than the independent variable. So this is designed to minimize any effects other than the independent variable. Okay? For our experiment, I think a really good control variable would be time. So we are going to create an experiment in which we vary the substances, but we keep each penny in those varied substances for the exact same amount of time. And by doing that, I can then um, affirm, I can verify that any change that happens happens only because of the substance and not because I soaked one penny in a substance longer than I soaked another penny. So that would be a good control variable. Then what we can see is we can look at our cleanliness and see if there is any link to our independent variable. And our independent variable is the thing we're using to test our hypothesis, right? So my vinegar, I'm going to take, so what would I take? Maybe I would take vinegar and I would take maybe salt water. And maybe I would take, I'm looking at all the things that are in my taco sauce and seeing if any of them has a greater influence than the other. Okay, So that is just an example of how you would set up an experiment to make sure you have all the correct groups and variables in place. Now what I'd like you to do is go back to the experiment that you have designed, and I want you to look and see, do I have all these three things in place? Now I am not under the assumption that you set up your experiment exactly like I did. If you did, that's fine. Make sure you have like a, a data table on Tuesday so you can record some results. Uh, if you have set yours up differently, that's great. Just make sure you go back and look and see, do I have a control group? And in my experimental group, do I have a control variable, one independent variable, and a dependent variable?
Okay, thanks so much.